All right, I want to do uh, problem 6-2, and it's a two-part problem. The setup is there's a 200-pound weight, and it's sitting on this grounded floor, let's call it. The friction coefficient, static fi friction coefficient denoted by mu, is 0.5 between these two p materials, okay? So that's usually a material property. So between the material of the weight and the, f and the floor, our coefficient of friction is 0.5, and that's given to us. So we, we're, they're given the weight, and we're giving, given the coefficient of friction, and we're given the direction. So in this case, there's a load that's being trying to push this weight across the floor, and we the question is how much load needs to be applied to overcome the friction force, which is in the opposite direction that we're being that we're trying to push it so this is our setup here okay and as always that force that's acting against the the load so basically that we don't really want to call this a resultant force because it really does have to do with angles and things like that which we'll find out in part B there's there's a, a portion of this that has to do with the angle but in this case there's no angles uh, there's just Y's and X loads so N just is a straight up calculation so let's go down here and just do this normal method that we always do, and that is the summation of forces around the y, or in the y direction, is zero. We know that. So n minus 200, n is positive, 200 is negative. That does equal zero, so then we know, that we know for sure that n is basically equal to w. So n is 200. So now we can solve for f. f is equal to coefficient of friction times n which is equal to, if we plug in the, the, the data for the unknowns, it's 0.5 times 200, so that comes out to be 100 pounds. So the force, the friction force, that's acting against the pushing force, or the load, is 100 pounds. So if we do a summation of forces, we find out that P is 100 pounds. So basically, it takes, it's going to take 100 pounds of load to overcome this friction force to get this thing to start moving, this 200 pound weight to start moving. Now, starting on part B of number 6, I'm sorry, number 2 in chapter 6, the only difference is this, that load is acting at, at an angle. So we need to find out what that load is. So we can do that. That's not a problem we have the uh, technology. So we're going to do the same old methods. Summation of forces in the Y. And uh, the difference this time is uh, we take our positive N because it's going up, our negative 200 because the weight is coming down, and then we add there's a little bit of an X, I'm sorry, a Y component here. And when we're dealing with Y, remember it's always the sign of the angle. So the if you want to think of this as the hypotenuse, the uh, load itself times the sine of the angle, 20 degrees, uh, needs to be added to these other two because it's going in that direction. You can tell that it's going in the positive, uh, I'm sorry, positive y direction. Since this is a static problem, we know that that's equal to zero, so then we can solve for n. And when you do that, you'll find out that n is, you can't really solve it any more simple than this. You get a, basically another formula. So we know that N is equal to this formula here. So it's 200 minus P times the sine of 20. All right, so let's solve for X to see if we can get any further along in this answer. Summation of the forces in the X are another component. So we want the X component of that same load. And when we're talking about X components, it's always cosine of 20 degrees, as long as the angle is relative to the X axis. Um, the only other force that's happening is the friction force, and it's going in the other direction, which is always the case. It's always opposite the load. All right, so uh, that's all equal to zero because we know it's a statics problem, right? We're in equilibrium. So we solve for F. When we do that, we find out that we can't get any more simpler, simple than this. It's basically F is equal to P times cosine of 20 degrees. So let's take these pieces into this other formula that we do know. We do know that the force, the friction force is always equal to the N times the coefficient of friction. Well, we know the coefficient of friction is 0.5. We've already s set up here that the, f 
the if we plug the substitute in this force this friction force for F being P cosine 20 and then we s substitute N from up here down into N in this little equation now we have this long equation here, this kind of medium sized equation, it's not very difficult. And then we just do some algebra on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So basically, cosine of 20 is 90.94. Um, this is I just kind of did a couple steps at once here, uh, combined a couple steps into one. 0.5 times 200 is 100. 0.5 times p times sine of 20 is 0.17p okay so now that we have 0.17p and a 0.94p and these are added together here or subtracted if I added 0.17p to this side of the equation I could get rid of this p, p times 0.17 here and if I add it over here I have to add it over here so if I add 0.17 to 0.94 I get 1.11 and when I divide 100 by 1.11 I get P equals 90. So the load if it's pointing in the upward direction of at 20 degrees the load to get this to overcome the friction force to get it to start moving would be exactly 90 uh, pounds in this and I forgot my unit sorry about that so I should say 90 pounds at 20 degrees up. so hopefully this helps